Okay, so it's day technically one of Gen Con, which is, as I recall, the four best days in gaming. And I'm happy like a squealing little boy. Uh, I've always wanted to go to Gen Con. Um, it's, it's like a gamer dream to come here because it's everything you could want in one place. All these people, all these companies, and even just like old games you thought you forgot about. Uh, you'll stumble on here and just totally squeal, like the aforementioned. Uh, I met some of my own heroes today, but we'll get to that later. So, uh, hi! Uh, I'm Gordon, Gordon Bonetto. Uh, I do illustrations for all the things that I can. Uh, right now, Catalyst, Chattel Run, my own stuff, um, whatnot. You may have seen some of my artwork. It looks like this. Neat. So, uh, if you have, cool. If you haven't, now you have. I actually arrived last night, uh, which was a five hour drive, roughly. Um, it was actually a really nice drive, if that can be a thing. We got in at around six o'clock, um, just kind of bedded down. I'm in a hotel room Ooh. at the Hilton. One sec. Hey. Sorry. Anyway, uh, so uh, as you can see, I'm actually sharing a hotel room, the Hilton, in Indianapolis. Uh, it's really nice. Uh, I don't like their total lack of free Wi-Fi, but, you know, whatever. We're only paying for, like, a really nice suite. That's fine. But at least it's in the lobby, so I can update or upload some stuff. Um, I'm actually shooting this off of my new Surface Pro, which I got for the trip so that I can do my digital artwork while I'm here, uh, which has been a super cool boon, uh, even though I, man, I just want to keep being out on the floor instead of doing um, anything else, period, like, at all. I want to be out there, like, walking around, buying all the things and seeing just amazing cosplay. I saw a 10th Doctor walk down the street that was so perfect that I had to stop for a second because my brain kind of hiccuped and went, oh my god, the Doctor. And there's like there's like 300 Doctors at all of these cons, so I don't know why I had that reaction. Apparently his was just really, really good, but regardless. Anyway, I'm sharing a hotel room. There's like eight-ish guys in here, um, and they're all pretty cool. Um, I don't know any of them except for John, who's my friend who got me uh, to come to this. Which, thank you, John. I'm sleeping on the couch, which is surprisingly comfy, but still kind of weird. Anyway, got in last night. Uh, pretty much just everyone met everyone. And then got some kind of late night gaming in. Um, tried out some new things. I tried a game called Suro, which was really cool if you're into kind of the Japanese aesthetic. Uh, it's competitive while being... I, I guess technically non-violent. Uh, your boats and wake and things are involved. Giant sea monsters. Anyway, um, I'm saying that a lot. Anyway, 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 anyway. Um, <clears throat> we went to bed. I had to get up really early to run into the convention hall to get my pass um, because da -da -da -da. Uh, I let's see if I can see it. Barry, zoom in on that. Uh, sorry, I'm not. They know. Anyway, um, so this is my exhibit. Sorry about that. My laptop fell because I'm a doofus. This is my exhibitor pass and super fancy shadow run pin um, for Catalyst, which my uh, art director was kind enough to get for me so I could pop around the booth and help out what little I can because I'm kind of just in the way but it, whatever it's really cool and it's actually super neat because just this little exhibitor part I can like cut through anywhere in the convention I feel like I feel like I got like the secret key in Resident Evil that lets you go through like all the doors and all the back ways you don't have to deal with any zombies because fuck it you got the key I don't know that that's a thing so I got to just zip around all over the place and cut through all the lines and everything which was fantastic 
it also means that I pretty much have instant access to anything, which on the one hand is fantastic, but on the other hand means that I want to buy everything. Like, that's the main thing if I could warn anyone, and I knew coming in, but if I can warn anyone coming to Gen Con who is a, like a devout gamer, you will want to buy all the things. There's so much. You don't even know. Uh, and I'll, I'll, it'll come up again, because good lord. Um, but yeah, I kind of feel super fancy, because I can cut through anything. And uh, I have seen just some really amazing stuff. Uh, I got some really amazing stuff. I even was able to pick up some things that uh, I've worked on in the past by pretty much just walking up, kind of opening the book, smiling, and seeing my name in there. And because everyone is so helpful here, I mean, really, it's it's an amazing community. I've met, I've yet to meet, I've met to yeet, meet, I've, I've yet to meet a single rude person, which is saying something, because I'm from Chicago, and rude's kind of like a thing that we just do, uh, but not here, and, and so it's really nice. Um, everyone's been super helpful in any way they can be. Um, it's really good for a beginner because it's a it's a lot of convention uh it's giant it's it's the biggest convention i've ever been to and i'm here for four days and this is day one so i'm already like what am i gonna do <laughs> but all i had to do was pretty much just smile and talk to someone and say uh hey is there any like artist discount because i'm this is me i'm here it is mm, i'm in the book can i have a discount on this book not an unreasonable. Mm-hmm. Yup. Not an unreasonable request. Um, but almost every single one, in fact, every single one has said, dude, that's awesome. Here, just take one. And so I kind of run around and get anyone else's signatures I can on it, including the people that are working there, because that's fantastic. If if I can, if they're not like super busy, because I don't want to be annoying. Um, but on that note, uh let me show you some of the doodads that I got. So, stay, stay still. Okay. Back. So, don't mind that. That's just a... This is how many things are going on in this event. This is like a previews magazine, except for everything that's going on. It's Gen Con's um, program book. All of this. Four days. I'm not gonna sleep, I guess. I'm just not gonna sleep. No need to sleep. I'm a freelancer, baby. I do this all the time. I cannot sleep for days. I don't get that time back. So, I got one of these. Uh, for those of you that play D and D, you know what these are. But uh, they are Chessex reversible dungeon master mats. They're huge. They're for when you need to plot like I don't know the whole forest or the whole dungeon. You put it on your maps with a marker, a uh, dry erase marker, which <laughs> we learned. Uh, but you put it on there. But the cool thing about these is at Gen Con, you can get factory second mats, okay? Which are clearly the best mats. They're not, they're not the best mats. They're pretty good. Actually, no. They're, they're totally fine, in fact. Because what a factory second is, is if there's a slight printing error, um, or a slight miscut of something, it's uh, considered a factory second. And factory seconds, they can't really sell them because it's not like a good example of their work. Other reasons, I'm sure. Uh, but you can buy them at Gen Con for like stupid cheap. Um, I'm talking like this thing, it's like a $35, $40 mat on account of it's big as all hell. Massive. But. Because it's a factory second, these things go for like five bucks. I think both of these were, this was five, this was ten. And this one was five because it's clear vinyl. Uh, which you'd kind of think like, why do you want a clear vinyl mat? You can just draw on whatever. But a clear vinyl mat's cool if you're playing a game that isn't necessarily grid-based and you don't want the grid there. Not only that, but if you end up doing like D&D &D tiles, like the tile sets that they put up, those are really cool. And as soon as you play them, and touch them, they fly across the room, and you have to rebuild the dungeon. The vinyl one, it's not only good for just doing your own maps or whatever, uh, but because it's clear, you can build your whole flat dungeon and put this on top of it, and then you can dry erase over this without having to screw up your tiles, 
people can touch the boards without them flipping out and having to be replaced every five seconds. Or you can just draw super neat whatever you want and have different backdrops, whatever. Basically, a vinyl, a clear vinyl dungeon mat is whatever you make out of it. I might actually do something with this to show you guys later because uh, they're fun. And you can get really creative with this stuff. If, if you're on a budget, you can find ways to do this. And believe me, I've been a gamer on a budget for years. Budget. Budget. I don't have a lot of money. Uh, quick start rules, because I missed it this free, free RPG day, which if you guys didn't know was a thing. Free RPG day. Google it. Like, now. Uh, free RPG day is fantastic. Another video. <clears throat> Boom. Okay, I've been waiting for this thing forever. Uh, if you guys didn't know, I'm in this book. I did illustrations. It's actually one of the very first uh, books I've ever been in. Um, back when it was Dragon Age set 3, and they came out in wee little box sets. Um, this was the second company I've ever worked, third company I've ever worked for, um, Green Ronin, who are great guys, and I went up there today and I said, what a really cool book, oh my god, it's out, because I really want to play this, I love Dragon Age. Uh, when they gave me this job, I... But, I, but that's what I did. They handed it to me as an art copy because they're fantastic. Um, so now I have this, which means I'm going to play that. and might play it on a channel because that's a thing that people do now. And now that I think about it, I think Will Wheaton already did that. So I can't do that now because of the rules of internet. Will Wheaton. I'm in the book. I can't do anything. Star Trek. I stopped by the Privateer Press booth, um, who make War Machine and Hordes, which are amazing games, and I will link them below, um, because I love War Machine and Hordes. It's steampunk wargaming, it's like Warhammer, but easier and faster and more visceral. You can't really tank and just sit on one side of the mat, like you gotta run in and you gotta beat up your opponent and just hope that you're punching him harder than he's punching you. It's, it's fantastic. Like I said, link below for art. Right. But, speaking of art, uh, one of the super cool things they were giving out is if you bought anything, period anything, how about a $5, like, retribution of, uh, Syrah, like, why am I talking about it? I like that I'm talking about it while holding the bag that has the patch in it. There's a patch for it. I couldn't find it, because I'm not good at this, because this is my fucking... Because I'm a doofus. But all I did was buy that. They gave me this because Gen Con. Uh, okay, so that's War Machine. Giant steampunk. Good lord, it's awesome. It's also a backpack. Because uh, pretty much everyone gives out some kind of bag. Not, not everyone, actually. It's the, the bigger companies can give out bags and stuff. And the War Machine one is really big because you're buying box sets, you're buying heavy stuff and so they know that and so they're being good good to their consumers which is thumbs up moving on these brilliant guys catalyst uh who make the amazing game shadow run which is very in-depth and really really good uh they also had a booth obviously uh where i was at and they also gave a bag theirs is all super neon green and awesome uh, a little more messenger bag style, whatever, super cool nonetheless. They have all kinds of stuff, pretty much every book they're doing, plus they have a giant battle tech area. That's something that is really cool but that I don't really play. Um, my friends seem to all do, but I only really have mental capacity for like one or two war games and then the rules start getting fuzzy. Um, so I, very cool, it's very kind of legacy looking. Uh, which is its own thing, which I kind of prefer updated looks. Um, it's just funny because I was just talking about warm candy. Whatever. Um, so it's, it's not for me. It is for them, though, and it's amazing for them because it's exactly what they want it to be, and it's amazing. Um, I will link uh, Catalysts, both things, so that you guys can check them out because you should, especially Shadowrun, where you can see this... Uh, and other stuff by this guy. Um, just cause, you should. I paint it and I want you to see it with your eyes, please. 
I also got from Catalyst a fancy Shadow Run shirt. That is the Shadow Run Serpent Dragon Bird Quetzalcoatl S. It's the Shadow Run S. It's wonderful. It's the same thing that's on here. Ooh. It's really iconic. Um, and I just wanted to be able to kind of swag my stuff, and that way people go like, what a cool S. And I'll be like, it stands for hope, and then punch him in the face. And then I'll say, thank you, it's the game that I worked on, uh, blah, 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 and show him all that stuff. Folding. You're never in too big of a hurry to not fold your clothes. Then... I got these, which are Halloweener themed, uh, uh, themed Shadowrun dice. And if you don't know, in Shadowrun, there are street gangs because it's the cyberpunk future and everyone's a street gang. And Halloweeners have a silly name, and I'm sad about that because they're my favorite gang. And they, they're, they're called the Halloweeners. Back at Privateer Press, I ended up picking up whoop, that. That is the Retribution of Cyber, which is my army, because elves be bad. Uh, I love them. They're fantastic, they're versatile, they're neat. Their warjacks take some getting used to visually, because uh, some of them look like grasshoppers. I Yeah! Uh, so, that. Anyway, I also got, and this is for you, Aaron, because I know you're watching the video, Aaron. Some elf ear costume for the ear ears, ear ears for hearing on your ears. Uh, so I'm gonna put these on her, or possibly have her put them on herself, because then it's not terrifying. I got spirit gum and whatnot, so I'm gonna elf her right up. I'm gonna elf you up. You want? Uh, you see me on the street? I'm gonna walk up to you. I will give you a hug. I will turn you around, and I will elf you right in the face. Also, if you end up at Gen Con, you get one of these. It's a Gen Con coupon book. I don't know if you always got one on account of it's my first time here, uh, but you do now, and basically it's all the local businesses and, well, not all of them, but all of the cool ones, and it's all of the, like, booths or... Mm -hmm, uh, they give you coupons where if you have this coupon and you show up at their booth, you get a discount or you get a free mini or, like, an exclusive. They're very cool, and I recommend... If it's your first night going to the con, uh, if you can get your bag before the actual convention, uh, do so because you're going to want to go through this book before you actually hit the exhi exhibitionist hall. Exhibit hall. Uh, because if you hit the exhibit hall, you will buy things. Uh, period. You'll find a way. You'll sell your kids. Your kids will sell their toys. Tiny child gangs. Regardless. Uh, you'll buy stuff. If you've gone through this the day before, you'll know what coupons exist, or at least have enough of an inkling of it that you can think, oh, that's familiar, I'm pretty sure I got a coupon from them. Boom. Um, it's not something you want to do when you're actually on the floor, on account of that floor is crazy. It's super packed with people, and it's Thursday. Like, it's not even a for reals convention day, and it's packed. You don't really have the time, and it's actually a little rude if you stop and pull out your coupon book every time you get to a booth, because other people are trying to go, and it's really this flow of traffic both ways, and you don't want to be that guy, don't want to be that guy, don't want to be the guy that stops every five feet to check his cell phone, open up his booklet, blah, blah, blah. If you are that guy, I hate you. Stop it. Stop doing that. Move. Move along. There's a flow of traffic. If you have your giant ass backpack in your huge bag and you are stopping every 20 feet to take out your coupon book or more predominantly your cell phone and stare at it, or even better, my personal favorite, I'm going to walk into the middle of the hall, stop and stare. That's people bumping. Point is, read your coupon book the night before. You'll save yourself some money because you'll know what to look for. You can even clip out your favorites beforehand. Super handy. Try it. I also got approached by the guys that make Sirenscape. Um, Sirenscape is a really cool 
uh, digital fantasy player. Sirenscape is just music for your games. And you basically, if you're a DM and you're in the current era, you're probably DMing off of your laptop. Um, some people, I'm sure, just recoiled in, in horror and others in fear, but that's it really is a really nice way to do it. You can control the music. You can control a lot of things off of your digital um, look at device. And uh, Sirenscape is actually really cool because it, it gives you all the audio stuff that you need. It gives you ambient sounds. And I don't just mean like rain and thunder and stuff. Um, it gives you people talking in the distance. It gives you wagons moving, uh, bar sounds, tavern sounds, because God knows we know every D&D game starts and or ends at a tavern. Uh, you need those sounds. They also have really cool battle sounds. You can actually put on the sounds of a battle going on and set up like play different cues for spells and stuff like that. It may seem like it's a lot, but the way that they do it, it's really convenient. Check it out. Um, I don't know if they're still doing a free trial or not, but regardless, it's worth looking up. It's a really cool way to kind of bring your players and yourself more into the world that you're playing. Check it out. I also got one of these, which looks like some kind of red squidly mass right now, but it's actually... A Beholder Dice Bag. It is a Beholder Dice Bag. I could cry. So this is really cool. Um, and what's, what's even cooler about it, uh, it is made by Scott Kurtz. Probably not physically handmade by him, but the design is. And it's for Table Titans, which is fantastic. And I will link it below. Uh, Scott Kurtz does PvP. Some of you may know him as Benwin Bronzebottom from Acquisitions Incorporated. Really cool guy, and I actually got to meet him today, and he retained his legend of being a really cool guy. Uh, just really friendly, and actually signed the inside of my Beholder, which you totes can't see because it's secret. But he totally did sign it, um, and now I have a super cool Beholder to terrify my players with. So the next time they put down their minis and go like, I'm a knight! I'm some kind of lizard cat. And then I'll be like, cool, this is to scale. So that's awesome. Bag noises. So all of this is actually some really good examples of stuff that you'll get. Some of it I paid for, some of it, I most of it I didn't actually. Um, and it's just a lot of free demos, a lot of really cool swag that you just get for showing up and saying hi at anyone's booth. Um, including if you're, again, War Machine! Uh, they just released Unleashed, which is their new kind of brutal, hordes-based role-playing game. I think. I haven't played Unleashed yet, but I will! At some point, because Troll can, yo. Um, well, this elves, but... The Troll can or need, I'm sure eventually I'll give me a chance. I got things for sword makers, so that I can sword. I got things for elves. Oh, the ears! That's just their card. They're really cool. This is for the ears. They came from Aradani Studios. She was, I don't remember her name, and I didn't get it, but she was really nice. And even helped me pick out the right ones for my lady. Again, people are just really nice here. It's, they're not trying to just hawk you something. They actually want you to get something you're going to use. You get quick start rules, like this one, for Infinity, which looks baller. Uh, their booth was amazing. Lots of really, really cool minis. Lots of really cool terrain. Um, I know Shadowrun doesn't have miniatures out yet. I'm waiting. Got reason to wait. In the meantime, Infinity has actually come out with some really cool minis. Uh, a lot of them are uh, just super high-tech, cyberpunk-looking figures. Totally at home in any cyberpunk role-playing game uh, or fantasy role or fantasy sci-fi, sci-fi role-playing game. They're gorgeous, and you could totally use them in Shadowrun if you are a guy that uses minis in your Shadowrun. You get discount tickets. So literally, try this game, here's a discount ticket. Other doodads, Savage Worlds, another role-playing game to try. Um, Zombie Orpheus was there, and they handed me this. 
And if you're wondering why I keep looking like this, and then like this, and then like this, and then like this, instead of just looking like this the whole time, uh, it's because on my surface, I'm still getting used to the video program that I'm doing. So just try and bear with me. I know it's probably annoying. I'm going to try and just stare right here. Shoot. Because you're so cool. Um, so I'm just going to look at you, girl. Mm, right here. Because you're awesome. I did it. I looked down. But you. Um, also, you can get just really, really, I keep doing it, it's so hard to look at the little dot, I'm fine. You can get all kinds of giant catalogs, um, from pretty much any of the, the places that you go to. Uh, Chessex has a huge one, um, Medieval Collectibles, kind of LARP thing, uh, has their own giant, super awesome catalog. Um, and they're they're all free, and these are like giant magazine size things. Uh, maybe that's like, who cares to some people? But dude, I'm really poor. Walking through a convention hall this packed and getting this much stuff is like, it's crazy. It's it's like geek boy Christmas for me. I love it. I also tried to not completely freak out uh, because one of my uh, major artistic inspirations, Wayne Reynolds, was at Gen Con. He is at Gen Con for the duration it seems and I finally got to meet him and Wayne Reynolds is from England land over there not here uh, so I never get the chance to actually meet him I met him today he's fantastic uh, super nice humored me through all of my no doubt uh, borderline eerie questionings because I just I had so much that I wanted to ask him about his process and uh, about uh, just the freelance life and any advice he might have for me. And he answered every single question uh, with a smile and just the whole time was fantastic. I got some amazing prints from him that he signed with some really cool inspirational words. Um, so that was just, that was awesome. I, for that alone, um, Gen Con is paid for. Um, it was just super cool, and I, I can't really gush enough about how cool um, meeting one of your very first artistic inspirations and have him be a totally cool guy who seems like he's really rooting for you it was just amazing. I'm done. I geeked out. I'm good. I can go home. I'm fine. This was totally worth it, even for this. Um, but I'm not going home. I'm staying here for another three days till Sunday. Um, so this is only video one. The next video will be probably over here. Hmm, does that look nice? Probably over here. And it's going to chronicle day two. Because after the exhibition hall, I had so much stuff from walking around, collecting things, buying things, wanting things, getting free things, talking to people. Uh, I was just deadbeat, had to, had to kind of find the nearest chairs and just chill for a little bit. Um, so that my legs could start working again. You get tired here, like really tired, and also exceptionally hungry. But I will say this, unlike almost every other convention I've gone to, the food here is actually affordable. Maybe not good for you, but it's really affordable. If you think that $4.50 for a single bratwurst is affordable, and I do because I love them. There's also a mall that you can take any of the various skyways through here to get to. Um, super convenient full food court. I mean, it's like a full mall, so you don't have to pay crazy fees for anything. You can just run over the food court, get some food, run back. Uh, super great. But after all of the running to and from food court with giant bags full of things, I'm a little exhausted. I might hit the floor again. Um, we'll see how it goes. I may actually end up spending the night in just kind of trying to catch up on some drawing because I'm fairly inspired now. Um, but either way, uh, I had an amazing day one. And I can't wait for day two. So I'll see you guys all there. Well, I'll see you after, um, by probably like a week from now. So uh, I'm probably going to be pretty scared by then. Confused, maybe. Anyway, I will see you guys in my future, your now. So if I taught you anything new, or showed you something cool, or even you just enjoyed the video, you like my beard, I don't know, any reason, the decor of this stylish hotel, click like, maybe subscribe, maybe not, eh. <laughs>
please do whatever you want. Uh, but thank you very much, and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye. Click beep. But come on. Hmm. Yeah. That's not doing it. This is a little awkward. Hi. How about beep? If you're really bored, you can count how many times I did this. Because I couldn't stop doing it the whole video. I don't know what's over there or why my eyes keep looking over there, but it's probably pretty bad because doing it. You should check.